Hey everybody, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. Now recently Qualcomm announced its latest iteration of its quick charging technology, Quick Charge 3.0. And today I want to take a look at what is quick charging and specifically what is quick charging 3.0. So if you're ready, let's go. Now one of the things that probably annoys all of us is our battery life. Have you found yourself stuck somewhere away from a charge and your battery's down to 10% and you don't know whether you're gonna have enough energy left in the battery till you get home and things like that. Well, there are different ways that manufacturers are trying to solve this problem. One of course is there's ongoing battery technology research. Another way is we're trying, the companies are trying to build better phones, better CPUs, better displays. And another approach is to have a quick charge technology which allows the phone to be charged up very quickly. Therefore, if we're about to dash out somewhere, we can just plug the phone in and a few minutes later, it's got enough charge to keep us going until we get home. Now we need to talk a little bit about charging technology before we go any further. The modern smartphone, when it charges, it charges in two phases. The first phase from zero to about 80% can be done with quite high levels of energy and the energy is just pumped very quickly into the battery. However, there has to be a trickle charge at the end. That last bit from 80% to 100% has to be done at a much lower level of energy. That's just the way the batteries work. Now, if you'll notice that when companies like Qualcomm and Samsung talk about quick charge, what they all talk about is how quickly they can get to 80%. We can charge it to 80% in 30 minutes or in 40 minutes or whatever the numbers they are quoting. And that's because that first initial stage is very easy for them to pump in that energy. However, there isn't yet technology that exists for that latter 20%. And sometimes that 20% can be actually as long as the initial 80% or maybe even longer. Now, on your computer, you've got a USB port. Now, USB ports used to be the standard way for charging up phones. You used to plug your phone into the USB port and it would charge up. But of course, USB has only five volts and 0.5 amps. Now that was fine for phones of a few years ago with much smaller batteries, much smaller displays. However, today we've got big five inch, six inch phones that have massive 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 milliamp hour batteries and they need a lot more energy to charge them up. So a modern day phone will come with its own charger that's rated at five volts and probably something like two amps. Now that, if you work know a bit about physics, that gives you a total of 10 watts of energy, two times five, 10 watts of energy that you can pump into your telephone. Now quick charge works with more wattage than that. By using more than just five volts, it might use nine volts or even 12 volts. Now, even if your phone has quick charge, even if your phone uses its own charger at five volts and two amps, you still can actually plug it into a USB port. And let me give you an example. My Galaxy S6 will charge using Samsung's charger in about one hour and 20 minutes. However, I can plug it into the USB port on my computer and charge it at five volts, 0.5 amps, which is 2.5 watts compared to the 10 watts of a five volt two amp charger, so 2.5 watts. And actually that will take about six hours. It takes six hours to charge it that way, where it will take about one hour and 20 minutes if you use Samsung's charger. Now this is where quick charging comes in. Qualcomm invented this idea that it could charge at higher rates than just 10 watts. Now I'm gonna to read to you now some of the numbers just so that you know what kind of different levels we're dealing with. So a normal USB port is five volts, 0.5 amps, that's 2.5 watts. A normal charger for a modern day smartphone might be five, out, five volts and two amps, which will give you 10 watts. Now quick charging will give you nine volts at 1.67 amps, so it's less amps, less, less than two amps, not 1.67 amps, and it will give you 15 watts of power that will get pumped into your battery. And quick charge too, in fact, will even work at 12 volts. And if you have 12 volts at 1.67 amps, that gives you 20 watts of energy. So what happened with quick charge 2.0 is that Qualcomm invented a system where they could get up to 20 watts of energy into the phone. Quick charge 3.0 is basically the same idea, but there's one important change. With quick charge 2.0, there were those just set voltages, 9 volts, 12 volts, 5 volts, 1.67 amps, and all those numbers I just read you. 
But now with Quick Charge 3.0, there's an intelligent system, an intelligent negotiation system that allows the phone and the charger to talk to each other and ask for exactly the volts that the battery requires, exactly the amps that the battery requires for its current stage of its charging cycle. That means that the phone won't be drawing more than necessary won't be taking more from the charger than it has to, which means that that extra heating up effect won't happen as it tries to get rid of the energy it doesn't need. Now, before I go on, I want to tell you a, a quick, slightly comical story that happened to me this summer. A friend of mine, very dear friend of mine, was uh, I was with him and he didn't have a charger for his phone and he found a charger, he didn't talk to me, he just found a charger, a USB charger, and he plugged it in and he came to me a little while later and said, my phone isn't charging, what's wrong with it? Have I broken my phone? And we went and had a look at it and we checked the cables and then I thought to look at the reading on the actual charger and it was an old iPod charger and it was rated at something like 0.1 one amp or something, it really was quite tiny. And of course it wasn't enough energy to actually start charging his phone. But there was another charger that he had that looked identical to that one, but when you read the label, you saw it had a great different output. So it's always important to check what's on the label of your charger because they're not all the same. One good thing is though, is that if you charge, if you put in a phone into a charger that's too big for it, if it's like a two amp one, but your phone only needs one amp, for example, it doesn't matter, it won't blow it up, the phone will only draw from the charger what it actually needs. But conversely, if you stick a bigger charger into it, it won't charge it up any quicker. The phone is the thing that draws the current from the charger. The phone is the thing that asks for the current so that it can charge up its battery. So you're pretty much safe to plug in just about any charger. In fact, I've even plugged in the quick charger uh, chargers into a normal phone that doesn't have a quick charging and it works absolutely fine. And I've tried quick chargers on Samsung products and Samsung chargers on quick charger products and they all work fine. They're all basically interchangeable because the last thing these companies want is a story of someone plugging in their phone and blowing it up because they used their charger on it. So it's all going to be okay. So back to the uh, in of technology, the thing about it is, is now the phone and the charger can negotiate with each other and the phone is able to ask for anything from 3.2 volts upwards to 20 volt in increments of 200 milliamps. Okay, so that means it has fine control over what is able to be drawn from the charger, which means there'll be less heat going into the phone. Less heat means there'll be less heat dissipated, means your battery won't heat up so much, and of course it saves your electricity bill. In fact, Qualcomm are saying that this particular new technology is 38% more efficient than a, a quick charge 2.0. Now, one thing to note is that you're gonna need a really good USB cable for this. A cheap USB cable isn't going to hack it. If, you're starting, if your phones are starting to draw 12 volts, even 20 volts of current down them, you're gonna need a proper USB cable and probably the one just supplied with your phone will be good enough. But if you ever do buy a replacement, make sure you buy a quality one because that's going to be an issue. Now, of course, this is all in the future. There are a couple of companies that have already released Quick Charge 3.0 chargers though they're a bit worthless at the moment because there are no phones that are able to use it. However, in 2016, maybe even in early 2016, we might start to see some phones that appear with Quick Charge 3.0 technology built into them. Well, my name is Gary Sims from Android Authority. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Also, please use the links above to subscribe to Android Authority's YouTube channel. Also, hit you'll find links to our social media and to my social media links. Also, please use the comments below to tell me what you think about Quick Charge 3.0 technology. And if you want to, you can gripe in general about batteries and battery life. That's absolutely fine. And as for me, I'll see you in my next video.